Hi, I'm Marianne Howright. When you're thinking about purchasing a home in a new home neighborhood, something that's really important to look at that's often not investigated as closely as it should be is the home site. The neighborhood will usually have a, a plat map. The builder and developer will have provided that, and it'll be beautifully colored. Show the different lots and the walking trails and amenities and the roads and the different phases of the neighborhood, houses that have sold. It'll have all kinds of information on it, but not all the information you need. So let's take a drive and I'll show you some things to look out for. When you're driving through the new home neighborhood, look up. New homes have underground power, but in almost every neighborhood, there are power lines that bring electricity to the underground power. Look for these green boxes. Sometimes clients are surprised to find one in their front yard. The slope is really important when choosing your home site. If a house is going to be located up a hill, it could have many steps. I can be pretty sure that these people didn't realize just how many steps they would have when they chose those home sites. This is sort of an extreme example of an uphill home. Look at all the steps. There's retaining walls in the front, and then to get to the front door, there's two more flights of stairs. In order to avoid that, you could have a retaining wall in the back on a slope site, but then your backyard's going to be right up against the hill. A slope downward is great for a basement, but it adds costs. If the lot is small, the front of the lot can be filled so the house can actually be at street level, like this one you're looking at now. A level lot seems like, oh, there wouldn't be any problems, it would be easy to build on, and that's true, but there's also a problem with getting the water away from the house. The builder will need to use swales or even yard drains to carry the water away, and your yard could still be soggy for months. Cul-de-sacs are popular, but there's very little street parking. Houses tend to be closer together because the lots are narrow in the front. This neighborhood had a problem with street parking. Erosion control is something else to look at. Sometimes detention ponds are temporary, but other times they're permanent, and they can either be beautiful or a mosquito breeding ground. Also, don't fall in love with trees because with the smaller lots we have in new home neighborhoods, they're often gone. This is a pump station, and sometimes they're hidden back behind trees, and the representative usually won't volunteer where they're located. You could have an unpleasant surprise sitting on your screen porch one day. They really can smell. Take a look at the lot you're interested in and notice the relationship with the lots around it. Has it been cleared? Is there a different slope? It's possible the lot could be filled, and it's something you need to know. Look for street lights and other things that might cause unwanted light coming into your house at night. If you like to sleep in the dark, a bright street light outside your window could be a problem. Also, take note of streams. That could be an indication of a floodplain. And while your lot may not be in a floodplain now, flood maps can change. So it's something to be aware of. And then just drive down the street and notice your neighbors, what the houses around it will look like. And always keep in mind when you buy in a new home neighborhood that some things can change and another builder could come in and build a completely different product and that could be good or bad. Well, those are just a few things to consider when you're choosing your lot in a new home neighborhood. Let me know if you have questions or if you would like buyer representation. This is Marianne Howe-Wright from Chapel Hill, North Carolina.